Hey guys, Gemma from ASD Rocks. I've had a lot of comments about the boys and their behavior, uh, mostly in relation to not only how supportive they are of each other, but how patient, polite, uh, respectful they are to the whole family and in general. And I thought that I'd like to take this moment to really actually address that because it is definitely not nature, it is nurture. These are the requirements that I expect from my children and I only expect them by demonstrating them. I myself was raised by my grandfather who was born in 1912. So I guess in a lot of ways, I sort of grew up in the 40s where or I mean not even I grew up sort of in an, an earlier era because I grew up in the era that my grandparents grew up in not that my parents grew up in but the actual era my grandparents grew up in so you know I I was taught to dance with my grandfather he was you know he would polish my shoes from school every single night because that's what you did in those days. And we we had, you know, certain subjects, okay, I'm, I'm far, far more uh, loose, I guess, or, or um, liberal with the subjects that we can talk about in regards to sexuality, in regards to, you know, challenges and things like that with my boys than obviously I grew up with. But the, the respect for your elders seems to be a really long time ago thing. The discipline, there's, there's such a debate over how we can discipline our children. I'm not just talking about on the spectrum here. I'm really, you know, I'm talking about if you hit them, it's child abuse. If you touch and love and kiss them too much it's child sexual abuse it's, there's you know everything is and when I say too much you know let's get a grip I'm saying other people's perceptions of what is too much and other people's perceptions of what is not acceptable you know we've gotten to an, an age where you know kids are absolutely not scared not not scared but you know parents can't even discipline kids in a class they've got no authority at all they are you know parents are trying to work out what what the what they're allowed to do in regards to disciplining their kids because you know, one minute it's it's abuse. I mean, you can't. I, I, I don't get me wrong. I think that absolutely, we all know that it's not okay to beat the crap out of your child, right? Like we all know that. Every being on earth knows right from wrong, with or without law. We all have this intrinsic innate understanding it's the it's the level of right and wrong that we expect within our families I think the biggest thing that it comes down to and the reason that I've had such success with my kids is because I have been so disciplinary with them and so strong from the day they were born I didn't they didn't turn 16 and then, oh, all of a sudden I expected them to behave better. You're too old, you know, to be behaving like that. Or, you know, they didn't turn a certain age and all of a sudden I wanted them to help around the house. They had to do these things, even with autism, from the day that they were conceived, basically. Um, what do I mean by that? I came under a lot of fire, a lot of fire uh, by my parents, well, my mother actually mostly about, you know, how 
disciplinary I was with with my kids you know she said they were too young uh, for me to put down these strict strict boundaries but with the strict strict boundaries they found comfort and with the strict strict boundaries I also gave incredible love and I think that's the balance that we really need to focus on you can't go all the way one way or all the way the other pure freedom and do whatever you want um, you know it, it, life's world is your oyster kind of thing because you know you're not educating them to the truth of the world which is it can hurt uh, you can't tuck them away and completely protect them because they'll never learn how to get up on their own. I, You know, you can't discipline and expect respect if you don't respect them. And that is the balance. And it cannot just start at the age of 10. It's too late. It's like early intervention. The earlier you start telling your children exactly where the parameters are, of what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do within this family or and what your expectations are the easier it is for them to fulfill those expectations it's not rocket science here children right up to quite a late age need boundaries strong boundaries none of this counting crap none of this one two three already you're saying i don't expect you to do it the first time that I asked, right? Because I've never counted to three, not in my entire life. Because if I ask for something, I expect you to do it then. My boys know that. They know that there is no one. If I have to breathe in after I've asked you to do it, it's already too late. So, you know, with that comes incredible love and support and, and hugs and, and, you know, beautiful, beautiful emotions. But don't overstep the boundaries. And they know exactly what those boundaries are. So I think that, um, I think that with the comments that I've gotten about the boys and the way they are, the way they relate to each other and interact within the whole family, I, I don't see any reason that someone with a typical child uh, shouldn't have a perfectly behaved child because if, if I can get Bo to be not only respectful but conscious of other people's feelings, uh, that he understands empathy, sympathy, that he, um, you know, he doesn't have to lie but it doesn't mean you have to be rude either. and to respect each other. Now, keep in mind, this started even when we were doing the whole learning to take turns. He had no concept of what was mine and what was yours. And a lot of work had to go into Finn, into tolerance, because Bo just didn't understand. So as Bo has progressed, we've been able to adjust those rules as the children progressed together. And I think, you know, keep remembering, this is about a family unit. This is about living in a society. This is not about how do they only treat me, but how do they interact in society with each other? No, I've never had to break up a fight with them. One, and Finn was three, I think, and Bo was five and they've never fought since. Um, never fought since and I'll explain to you how I did that another time but anyway that's my my take on the whole uh, why the boys are the way they are and my god I love them I do they are a freaking joy to have around all day every day all right ASD rocks <laughs>